Copy, copy. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well, I'm Lucas and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we have round two of the F1 eSports season for our onboard POV oh, series. Well. Today we've got Imola yep. and uh, yeah, last time out in Bahrain if you haven't watched it already. Um, yeah, we managed to, well I guess, spoil, I mean the races have already happened but like spoiler alert I guess is um, yeah, managed to get pole and win for the season opener of 2022 F1 eSports. So, we had a really good start to the season. This um, was on the Wednesday, um, and this was the Thursdays, because the F1 Esports events are held Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, one race each day. So this is now round two. This is day two of event one, and we are jumping straight into our first run of qualifying here in Q1 around Imola, which was, um, yeah, I would say for event one, Imola was definitely my weakest track, because we missed the apex quite significantly going around the end of sector one there. Um, so not the best start to the lap, we're struggling for traction, grip just felt very very low at this point in the session. So um, yeah, proving a tricky opening lap and yeah just oh, so close to invalidating, one of the hardest corners on the track to push the limits through. Holding fifth gear through here and then very smooth and tentative on the power. We weren't feeling 100% confident at this point because it was a little bit, it was a little bit scary, diving into the chicane a bit too much speed potentially into the second part as we struggle to control the grip on the exit. Two more corners, made, well two actual corners left to negotiate as we get onto the break, breaking on the kerb, understeering hugely into the penultimate corner, downshifting and upshifting into the last and oh, it's sorry. not been the best lap I've ever done in my life and it's going to put us provisionally ah. P8. Which is, uh, yeah, a no a basically plan. a no-go. We are going to absolutely have to do another run in qualifying to ensure that we get out of Q1 safely. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, Imola, the confidence for Imola was a bit up and down. It was, I think if we put the lap together, the pace was solid. Um, but it was, I wasn't feeling 100% confident about this track in quality trim anyway. So, it was, um, yeah, it was a definitely a challenge to hook it all up. But, Final run of Q1 now, using all the curve on the entry and on the apexes of turn 1 and 2. Managed to find 400s basically on the exit of that. Into this high speed left right chicane to end out of sector 1. Getting a much better apex and you can see immediately the delta flies up. And we have done quite a good sector 1 I think in comparison to the time before. We missed the apex completely but sometimes you don't even need to hit that apex due to the nature of the corner. Because the circuit grips up quite a bit on the exit. Diving into this corner, having to drop it to 5th. Still gained time, but not really optimising that left-hander. Now into this double apex uphill right-hander that I've forgotten the name of, which will come back to me during this video, no doubt. Losing time on the delta a little bit. And into the chicane, we know we've got time in this exit, so we set up the exit a bit better, I believe. And, and yeah, I'm talking rubbish, because we actually lose time. So we sacrificed the speed on the entry, but it was actually um, slower, because we just didn't have the overall commitment. So a bit, over comp a bit under underwhelming through there but we've only got a couple of corners left to negotiate managed to get a good let's launch go. at the last corner you can hear me saying let's go we know it's plenty enough of an improvement and that puts us p3 <laughs> and should be enough <laughs> to get us through qualifying into q2 oh, that was very and, hard uh, yeah i'm just saying there over the video that was hard because it was um yeah really really dicey on the limit it was not easy to put together but yeah p5 and q1 uh, both of us getting through as well with my teammate by which is cru crucial for the team so both of us getting through nicely. Um, I think Barry only needed, I don't know how many runs Barry needed, I think maybe, I don't know, I think, I can't really remember how many runs we needed actually um, for that session. I know I needed two, but yeah. Now onto the first run of Q2. And uh, how are we looking? Obviously the Delta at the moment is from my used tyre run. And uh, yeah, dropping the differential down now just to open up the car a little bit going at the end of sector one using all the road in the exit and it is a 006 sector 1 so it's a little bit quicker than it was on our final run of Q1 just not quite I mean just watching my driving back now a couple of months after the race it's just it was just it's just clear to see that the fundamental confidence wasn't there and, and the overall commanding of this car um, mainly on my side of anything because I mean we made so obviously through the season you make to, you make a lot of improvements and get everything dialed in and a lot more things set up and I certainly think if I went back and did this race now, as we get a really poor chicane there, which is going to cost us quite a lot of time. Um, but certainly, with the lessons that we learned and the things that we discovered through the season, going back to this race now would have been a lot more, a lot more at ease, I think, because um, I felt like I had to really scrap the car 
um, to extract the lap time in, uh, in oh, the in this track. So and faster, so this lap would have been probably good enough to get through in the one go chicane. had we not messed up that messed up that chicane. So cutting on now to our final attempt of Q2, where we are, we're sitting P8 at the moment, so we absolutely need to improve this lap. Um, but we know where all the time is, so it's all in that chicane, and that's exactly what we need to focus on. So not one to oversend it into the first section. Again, getting a nice save, but it's not quite carrying that, that such a great amount of speed through two, but it was just nice and clean, so matching the delta now into this high speed left, right? A bit too much curb actually, but uh, we didn't really improve the delta, we didn't really lose much, but we didn't improve a lot. Getting a nice apex there actually, and, but as you can see, even though we made the apex nicely, we didn't exactly gain anything, so the delta's pretty neutral at the moment. Um, heading into this middle, oh, and we wait, took way too much entry curve there. Somehow not losing much time on the delta, even though this lap hasn't actually really came together in many corners. But utilising a lot of road going through the upcoming rally, I think it's called. I'm probably going to get told off in comments if I got that wrong, but we'll see anyway. But now into the chicane, plenty of curve on the entry, getting a much better exit, and there you have it there. That basically a, a free one tenth of a second, which should be more than enough if we can just bring it across the line to get us through into Q3. But earlier the brakes there, but too much apex curb. Just nice and smooth through the last corner, and that is us hopefully securing our ticket into Q3. Are we good? 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 Are we through? Good. Oh. And then you can see we managed to secure our way into Q3. And um, yeah, the only downside now is I, as you can see now, warming up my tyres. We're skipping straight to the last run um, because I only had one set of tyres. Um, so yeah, it's a one and done. We've just got to give it everything and uh, see where we end up. So starting the lap now, just want to maximise the speed before you cross the timing beam. And uh, yeah, my, my weakness at this track, even last year's game on 2021, was always set to one. So I was conscious that if I managed to get set to one right, we could be on for a pretty good lap. So, going through set to one, using quite a lot of care on the apex of turn, well it's technically turn two, but I always call it turn one. Now we've got this high speed left, right, which I've always sort of struggled with, I guess, on this game. But we commit very well and use all the roads. We actually nail that really, really nicely. We have a 9-2 split, but we actually miss the apex there, so we somewhat slightly undid all our hard work. But we've got a good set to one, so I knew there was potential for still quite a good lap in here. So, chucking it into this left-hander. Not quite getting the minimum speed perfectly, but as you can see, Frederick Rasmussen is out of the session. We're getting yellow flags popping up, which was, and then you can see Freddy's in the wall on the right hand side. So that was not as an excuse, but it was a bit, I mean, it was ever so slightly distracting going into that double right hander because you were a little bit hesitant as to what was going to go, what was going to happen. A bit safe in the chicane, not through intent, but just it didn't turn out to be as sent as it could have been, but you know, it's a very risky part of the track. Two more corners to negotiate now to see where we're going to plant on the grid for the F1 Esports round two. That was a terrible line look as what was on it. But anyway, cut into the line and it is P2 provisionally. Sorry. We'll and you can hear me say sorry down. across no, the radio because going, um, it was, yeah, I'm all the time was lost in the middle sector. Sector one and three were very solid, I think, from memory. And as you can see, Thomas Ruan are taking provisional pole position at the moment. We are P3 at the moment, but with four cars yet to finish a lap, make that three cars now. With Daniele Haddad, Danny Moreno and Jarno Ockmier on a lap. Jarno Ockmier crosses the line, goes to P8. Daniele Haddad approaching the line now. Where's he going to put it? He's going to put it into P7. Danny Moreno, the only man to stop us now. And it's going to be P3. P3? P3? Looks like P3. Good yes, guys! Good yes, guys! Yes, sir! That was the hardest possible. Oh, I don't job. even care it's not pole. Like honestly, that was so tough. Oh my god. The friggin' middle sector, someone retired. I don't know what happened, but it was like so distracting. Like I had such a slow middle. So there you have it guys, we are P3 for round two at Emola for F1 Esports and um you could just see how much it meant though, because it was such a scrappy qualifying, it was really, really tricky just to string everything together. I was struggling with, you know, getting the best out of the car, and we knew we knew the pace was solid, very solid, if we managed to okay, extract a lap. So, yeah, to get P3 meant the world, and it put us in a, in a fantastic you. position um, for the race. So, yeah, here we go then, lining up on the grid, everyone around us on the hard tyres, five red lights appearing on your screen, and away we go. 
getting a very nice initial launch. And we actually have a very solid start. Thomas Rohner not getting a great start from pole position. Marcel Kiefer going round the outside into the lead. And you have to see, we actually have to back up the throttle. So we're taking it nice and safe, defending the inside a little bit into turn one. And we're just safely through into P3 to start this race. And uh, yeah. Not a bad getaway at all. So heading into the end of sector one for the first time. But Thomas Ronner loses his car completely over the curb. And we manage to get up into P2. Which is crucial. Because this puts us in position. Um, I couldn't avoid it. With the car ahead not having DRS for when the DRS is enabled. So this was, that was a crucial, crucial moment in this race. Yeah. This allows us now to, if we have enough pace anyway, to potentially challenge for P1. And the, eventually the win if we pull it all off, so a fantastic start to this race, up to We're P2, and um, now hunting down Marcel Kiefer ahead of us, so yeah, now it's all about trying to build a rhythm, trying to build the confidence, get into the groove of the race, um, and just sort of see what our race pace was like, um, you know, our quality pace was a bit yeah, we'll try peaky, again. it felt like if we got the lap it would be good, but it was very hard to extract, but in the race it's a different story, so yeah, we're just sort of sussing out where we're at in the race. Perfect. Thomas just felt like he had strong pace behind. He was able to follow pretty so. closely from what I can remember of these opening laps. Um, so yeah, first lap in the, lap in the books, first of 32 laps, quite a lot of laps around down like quite a long race. Um, so yeah, now just settling in, trying to get into a rhythm, trying to manage the battery, yes. manage the tyres. And uh, yeah, skipping on to lap five now. And yeah, everything is as it was, skipping uh, actually, no, we're on lap six now. We can see fastest laps getting set as the pace sort of starts to set. And then, as you can see, lifting and coasting now behind Marcel Kiefer. Um, and we felt, I think at this point, we've sort of realised we had good pace. Um, but as you can see, Thomas is falling pretty closely behind. So the last thing I wanted to do was wait behind the car ahead for too long and then Thomas try and attack me at the moment that, you know, didn't suit me. So it was going to be critical to try and make your move and make your play at the right moment in this race um, and if I was to try and overtake the car ahead I needed to make sure I did it without um, allowing Thomas behind as well to get the overtake done so yeah it's um, it's just a, a, a patient waiting game and we're just sort of sussing out when do we want to make the move how are we feeling how close the cars behind are and um, yeah Marcel Kiefer four turns ahead um, he had, I think he had a bit really more top nice speed race. than me as well, um, which was something else that I noticed um, in this race. We were very, yeah, okay. very quick in the final set, our yeah, car was working very strongly in that final section, but we actually we closed that gap up, up big time, we're only three tenths behind now, Thomas is three tenths behind, and I decide now is the moment, I'm going to blast the battery a tiny bit, Thomas is closing and closing a little bit, so I decide just okay, to okay. opt to go for the move, Marcel P4 does not fight it as he's obviously not too bothered about losing the track position at this point in the race, and we take the lead of this um, Amelia Romagna Grand Prix. I've probably butchered that pronunciation, so apologies for that. But we're in the lead of this F1 Esports race at Imola now. And now it's about trying to set the pace, try and just get into a rhythm and run in open air. I mean, the dirt air is quite powerful in, on this year's game, I feel so. Run hard, it's, 60%, 60%. Um, and you can hear my engineer Anton, the goal, awesome. giving us some, some ERS information on the cars behind. And um, yeah. Now it's just about seeing what our pace is like in open air and whether we're able to sort of comfortably sit there. Um, and as you can see, I'm just playing this lap through because we managed to open that gap up sort of to half a second and our pace in the last sector was um, really, really good. We had a lot of confidence, especially over these curbs. The car was set up very nicely for this last sector. Um, sector one, Marcel was definitely quicker, but through two, we were sort of the same and three, we definitely had the advantage. So this was all about learning the strengths and weaknesses of our surroundings, who was um, who is strong where basically, it's that simple, so yeah, coming out the last corner and we have got quite a sizable gap to the car behind, and uh, yeah, onto lap 8 now, skipping on actually, never mind, onto lap 14, and uh, yeah, again, as you were, just managing the gap, managing the battery, and, and uh, yeah, it was a, it is a pretty, pretty, I mean, it's pretty much as ideal as it's going to get, we're leading the race, our pace is pretty good, and um, yeah, you can actually hear me discuss with my engineer whether it's, yeah, we were discussing whether we wanted to box this lap, which I wasn't too keen on as I had a pretty solid gap. Marcel Kiefer opts the box behind and now it is time to push. This is crunch time now and I wanted to go longer. And as you can see, look at my ERS. We are blasting that battery because I did not want to bit box first and let Marcel use the, use the, the ERS and the DRS around that very, very long 
main straight and get out ahead of us and hold us up into sector one on the next lap because that was a high possibility that that could happen so I wanted to go longer than the car behind even if the undercut was very strong because I knew that Marcel wouldn't be able to make use of that DRS advantage whereas if I stay out it's as it was but if Marcel stays out and I box he gets a free zone of DRS so Marcel boxed on 14, we are going to box at the end of this lap and we are just giving it absolutely everything because we knew the undercut was strong but I knew that if I did a good job on this lap then we should hopefully return into the, the leading position um, theoretically for P1 and that would um, allow us to have a tyre advantage and our pace was pretty strong in the first stint on equal tyre tire delta so yeah we were if we managed to get pull off this tire advantage, this would be very big for the race. Um, so yeah, boxing now, darting in a little bit later just to see if we can throw off any cars behind, even though it's not really likely that happens. Our teammate Barry extending as he wants to build up a bigger tire delta. As he was running in the train, so for Barry he kind of needed to, he needed a bigger tire delta and a bigger nice. tire advantage to, 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 to make some overtakes um, because he was sort of running in that pack, um, so which is a very, very tricky thing to do. So, how many more laps? Yeah, you know? we can hear Barry actually discussing with his engineer as well how long he wants to go, but. Yep, we have Thomas and Nicholas who also box with us. We are exiting the pits now, and you can see I'm going to check behind me. Where's Marcel Kiefer? There he is right there. He's not too far behind. Marcel Kiefer rejoins in theoretical P2, and Frederick Rasmussen critically with a big, big undercut. I think he put it in lap 13. It's been a huge snap of oversteer in the exit of three, having a little bit of a warm-up. I'm just going to call that tyre warming. And uh, yeah, Marcel Kiefer right on the back of us as our front tyres are absolutely nowhere, defending the inside into the start of sector two and this is a critical lap because I cannot, cannot get put into a Red Bull sandwich. I cannot be overtaken now because if I get overtaken now, I'm not only in a Red Bull sandwich but I could also be overtaken by both Red Bulls and yeah, that's not what we need. So we really need to get these tires up to temperature and push and push and push. It's critical that I hold this lead into this lap. Um, and once our tires heat up. So going into sector three, a strong sector around this track, and we start to pull that gap. We're up to four and a half tenths, but I need to keep pushing because Marcel Kiefer has that straight line speed advantage. So heading into the final two corners, breaking as late as we can. Tires, thankfully on the mediums, fire up pretty well. So that was one thing that was going well for us. And we opened that gap to six tenths. So we managed to execute that perfectly. So yeah, we can see Anton saying good job. So. We nailed that. That was exactly what we needed to do. Well, in theoretical P1, we made the overcut work and we've maintained our track position. And now it's just like a waiting game. We're just going to be waiting on the cars behind to, you know, ultimately probably charge the battery to maximum and choose when to attack. And yes, yeah, skipping onto lap 20 now, you can see the remaining runners. So we have Jan Ortmeyer, Prisnader into the box to get onto what will be a very, very fresh set of mediums compared to what everyone else is on. So they are going for the sort of overcut style strategy. And uh, yeah, on lap 21. And yeah, the gap, it's Marcel Kiefer, Frederick Rasmus, followed by Moreno as well. I think Thomas Ronner fell back a little bit in the melee of it all after the pit stops. And yeah, on to lap 23 now, Bianca Lila, the last remaining driver to make his pit stop. Boxes off of the, I believe it's the hard tire, maybe onto the medium. Um, and yeah, now it is a straight dogfight to the end of this race. And it's a base, it's a waiting game. I'm just waiting and pushing every single lap. I'm just giving it everything, trying to manage my battery, trying to make sure that I'm having enough, re have enough on reserve to push at the end, uh, at the end of the race. And uh, yeah, Barry was also in the train trying to fight his way through as well, which is tricky. Even with a tower advantage, it was not easy for Barry to make his way through. So um, yeah, even though our pace and race was really, really strong. And Barry's pace was unbelievable at this track. It was, it's just so, it's such a shame because it's so tricky to make a move in a train. Um, and we didn't have the best top speed either, so it was quite, um, yeah, it was demanding. Um, so we've got two and a half laps left to run for round two of F1 Esports here at Imola. And the gap is at half a second. We have, I believe if I'm reading that correctly, about 70 odd percent of battery, I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, I think point being is we've got a very strong battery reserve and it's just about using that at the exact right moment because I was just waiting for updates on, you know, any, I was just trying to hope that I would get updates on what Marcel or Freddy's energy was as my prediction was that he was going to be on full battery but 
the good news for me was um, I had the fresher tyres, our pace seemed really, really good, and if my pace is really, really good, then it basically forces the cars behind to use their um, to use their pace and to push as hard as they can, and that can actually make them use more energy. But I don't know these things until I get told the battery. So, yeah, two laps left to run, and still no attack from the cars behind. We have led this race all the way back from I believe lap seven. So 20, it would be 25 laps leading from the front, which is, yeah, not not as straightforward as it sounds. It always looks easy, it sounds easy, but you've got to think about so many things. You've got to manage every single element. And yeah, now I'm starting to use batteries. We can see Marcel Kima, look at that Delta, it's starting to tumble down. One and a half laps left to go in this race. And I just, making sure I've got enough battery in reserve for an attack and I knew my pace was strong in this final section, so that's all I had to focus on. Gap is 4.7 tenths going into this fight, this high speed send at chicken. And what's that? I'm a little snap over here, but the gap is 5 tenths now. We've got a decent gap. We just need to utilize this on the button, on the battery. Our tires are getting a little bit worse for wear now, but we still have the tire advantage, which has helped us a bit in this second stint as well. Final corner now, heading onto the last lap of this race, and the gap is 6 tenths. We are on that energy button, we are pushing, we are pushing, okay, and it is looking good. We have a big gap to the car behind, we have managed the battery well, and even with the straight line speed advantage, Marcel cannot get close enough to attack into turn 1 or 2 or whatever it's actually called. Thomas Rohner getting himself up into P4 in the background as well. And there's only a few places that Marcel can attack now, he's 2, he's two tenths behind, so he's still, he's still running close. We have enough in reserve. He has a little faint look to the inside to try and throw me off, which I can actually see because I'm, I run virtual mirror, which is, um, I don't think many people actually do that, but I was able to see that one um, on the entry to centre two. And now we have a four tenth buffer basically heading into the final half a lap of this race. All we need to do now is make no mistakes. We know we've done the hard part. We know we have enough battery to cover anything. Marcel will be completely flat on his battery as well last time into this chicane, taking it nice and safe. And we all we need to do is guide it home. We have two more two proper corners left until we take our second consecutive victory to open this F1 Esports Championship out. We've we've led it from lap seven, we've managed it well and we're gonna take two in a row. Wait for it, 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 wait yeah, I didn't want to scream too early out the last corner because I didn't know if I was on track. But let's go! Yes, man! Yes! Yeah, well done, yes, man. Yes, man! Vamos! Oh, how did we do car. that? Let's go, team! Oh, that was so stressful, but we managed it so well. So there we have it, folks. We managed to take our second consecutive win, two out of two for this stage in the season. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a perfect start to the F1 esports season. It's it's literally like, in all the preparation that you put in and all the the work, you can't dream of this type of start. You know, to win the first two races of the season, it was it was too good to be true. And um, yeah, we, it was just overwhelming emotions as we cross the line sorry if your ears are a little bit sore after that one and um yeah thank you so much for watching this video hope you're having an amazing day thank you so much for the support as always and uh, yeah hope to catch you guys for the next video and uh, yeah the next video of this series will be round three at silverstone so um yeah thank you so much for watching have a great rest of your day love you all and i'll see you guys in the next one take care love you all and ciao